a camera stand, it's a P175 size 12. Now you could, this is a heavier wire hook, you could use a lighter wire like the B170 sizes, you can run 16s to size 6s, whatever, in this pattern. Uh, the bigger sizes I prefer a redhead, uh, which is more for the sea trout, because this fly can easily be fished in the lochs and the rivers, so. But anyway, the thread I'm using is a uni thread, 8 in black. Just starting the thread at the eye, and put down a layer of thread along the shank. Just stop it before the, the barb, a couple of turns before the barb, and then remove the waist piece. Now the tail's golden pheasant tip it. Now everybody's got their own idea of the length of the wing or the tail, what it should be. Um, if you work, say the shank length, and you're looking for around about half a dozen fibres, just for the tail. Now as you saw there, I hold the tips and then cut them away from the main feather. So there's your length, just onto that second black bar, and I'm using a couple of turns winding down. We quick look to see how they're sitting. That's fine. Trim that at full length of the, the body. Yeah. Then I'm going to use a fine silver wire, small or extra small silver wire in this size. This is to protect, protect the body. Just tie that in full length of the body. Again, helps to stop any steps. Now, tinsels, you could use if you want, the silver holographic tinsel, which is very popular, but not in the traditional one. You could use the silver tinsel. In this case, this is a Myla number 14. And you see it's gold and silver. It's gold one side, silver the other. So you can have best of both worlds. Now I'm just going to move it from the spool. Catch it at the bottom. Full length of the body again, so there's no steps. And then thread turns touching all the way up. So you get a nice smooth body. Just stop it round about say a mil and a half from the, the eye. Obviously with the silver side come round and then just to work it up, covering by slightly overlapping the your last turn with the silver tinsel all the way up. Cross your thread, two or three turns, remove the excess. Now when you bring the rib up, you could tidy up a wee bit there, but what I normally do for speed, just do a single turn at the back which protects the body at the back, and then you're looking, say five, maybe even six turns of the wire rib all the way up, come up Bring your wire straight up against the thread, put a, a bend, a 90 degree bend into the wire, and then carry one down towards the eye. Now the reason I'm doing this and tying in these two items at the same time is to save save a wee bit of bulk, and then keeping the thread tight, bend and break off the wire, and come back up. This is a Chinese hen. It's obviously dyed a teal blue. So you take one of the Hackles out. We tie it in by the tip. So I'm just going to pull back the fibres to reveal the tip of the hackle. And then when you simply come down with two or three turns, fold back the tip and come back up. And then back down. And this basically ties in the hackle really well. And uh, there's less likely that it's, it's going to pull out. You can cut away this end or what I'm going to do is just, on the tip, sorry, I'm just going to break it off, it's just as fast. Now we pull, fold the hackle fibres back, now it's up to yourself how many turns, you can have it quite lightly, light, and that's one and a half, two, just coming into my third turn here, and then we tie off. The tying off is, what I do is simply lift the hackle straight up, bring the thread to the side of the hook, fold, uh, basically pull the hackle down, and what I'm doing here is opening out these fibres, putting a 90 degree bend into the stem, 
so that I can slip the, the thread in between and then lock it down. Now, because these fibres are, or these hackles are, the stems are really thin, I can fold it back and come over that. I mean, locking it in, keeping the thread tight, I can break it off. Now, that's because it's a hen hackle uh, and it's really thin. Some hackles you can't do that, so just a matter of what I would do is just cut it off once you've secured it in with three or four turns. And then we're ready for the, the wing. Now, you can be really fussy with the wing, or you can just tie it straight on, and basically, what you're looking for is a teal feather, a body feather. Here's one. And I'm looking for a nice, even sort of spread of fibres either side. So you're looking for it quite square at the top. There we are, right there. Now, I, oh, all I do is just simply Take out the tip, just reveal the tip of the feather, hold the stem, and break that off. Form like a, a enough fibres either side of the, the feather to give me a right and a left side. And then you can pull these back. Now I'm going to wax the thread. Get the, the length I would like, which is not to the end of the tail. You can some people do like it that long. I, I like it slightly shorter. And then I just simply fold these fibers down either side. Now pinch and loop, come in with two or three turns. Here, look at your wing, see how it's sitting. Now to me that's looks fine. Nothing wrong with that. You can come in then, secure it in with some more turns, making sure it's not going to move. What I'm going to do here is just slightly so move the fibres about just to get them to sit right. And to me that's a good enough wing for a fishing fly. Maybe not for a photograph, but for a fishing fly that is fine. And then come in and trim away the excess. Now what I like to do is to wax the thread, stretch the thread to the eye and build the thread turns up from that from the eye up and into the cut ends. And basically that well, what you're really doing is you're catching in all these cut ends with each well, each turn of thread holding it and at the same time building the thread up forming a nice head keeping the thread tight come in and then just wet finish and again I'm just coming down finishing off the head with the turns while I'm wet finishing and trimming away your waist got a moisture in my fingers just to Get a nice shape in the wing so you can see what it's going to be like. And there we are. Once that's had a swim, it's ideal. And that's a nice proportion in your fly. And then a couple of coats of varnish. And that's your teal blue and silver.